Okay, hi guys and welcome to another video. In an earlier discussion, I shared my preferred approach for removing rust from a crazed blade. Emphasizing the importance of natural methods over harsh chemicals or advanced techniques like electrolysis. The cornerstone of this philosophy is simple. The natural juice extracted from coconuts is remarkably effective at eliminating visible rust from a grace blade. The reason I advocate for traditional cleaning methods stems from a fundamental difference in production. Now, Unlike modern items manufactured on an industrial scale, creases were crafted individually without the benefits or constraints of contemporary production technologies. This distinction is crucial because the composition of older crease blades oftentimes remains a mystery. Now, without a clear understanding of the materials used, applying modern rust removal solutions carries significant risks. There's always a chance that such treatments may react negatively with the metal, potentially causing irreversible damage. Therefore, I firmly believe in the wisdom of generations past, favoring time-tested techniques for crazy care. Today, I'm excited to showcase the current state of the blade and introduce the next phase of restoration. While the application of warangan is a common next step, today I will be sharing a unique method seldom discussed in literature or videos. By using two unconventional ingredients, you can effectively protect your blade mirroring the protective qualities of warangan. So, without further ado, Let's roll the intro and get on with today's restoration video. Hey, if you are meeting for the first time, my name is Kari Johari, better known as Pak Jofe, the Grace Collector from Singapore, your personal guide to the exciting world of the Grace and its collecting culture. If you are a fan of history, art, and mythology embodied into these traditional daggers that we natives of the Malay world refer to as the Grace, be sure to subscribe and join our community right here on the Grace Collector YouTube channel. In an earlier discussion, I touched on the process of soaking your blade in rancid coconut juice for no more than three days. Following a thorough rinse and drying period, you might notice reddish or brownish stains adorning your blade. While this might initially cause concern, there's no need for alarm. In fact, this is a positive sign. These stains serve as a testament to the blade's age offering tangible proof of its antiquity. A lack of such markings should raise questions about the blade's purported history. As we move beyond the soaking phase, we approach a critical juncture in our restoration journey, the meticulous pursuit of achieving the utmost level of mute. From this point forward, the soaking in rancid coconut juice concludes we now embark on a more hands-on, labor-intensive phase. Now, it's crucial to understand that the mere act of soaking the blade in rancid coconut juice is not enough to achieve this level of purity known as mute. According to Javanese tradition, before the application of warangan, the blade must achieve a state of mute characterized by a surface as white and unblemished as possible, free of any stains. This prerequisite is vital for a reason. 
it ensures that the warangan can penetrate deeply into the blade's surface pores. Any remaining stains or rust could obstruct this process, compromising the warangan's absorption. This not only affects the durability of the treatment, but can also significantly detract from the blade's visual appeal. Thus, achieving a state of mute is not merely a preparatory step. It's a crucial foundation that determines the success of the subsequent warangan application. What you need is to prepare a concoction consisting of one part paste detergent mixed with three to five parts fermented lime juice. This mixture is key to our next steps. For a detailed demonstration of the preparation and application process, I invite you to view the accompanying video, which you will find in the link in the video description, or alternatively, keep an eye out for a prompt that will direct you there. Begin by thoroughly mixing the solution. Then, using a toothbrush, gently brush the blade in a unidirectional stroke, starting from the base and moving towards the tip. Remember, the tangkai bila requires attention too. After brushing both sides, allow this blade to air dry for approximately 5 to 10 minutes. As it dries, you may notice greenish to yellowish spots emerging. These spots highlight areas that still need cleaning whereas clean areas will have a greyish appearance. This visual cue is your guide to repeat the process until the entire blade adopts a uniform greyish white tone without any further reaction. Now, for my blade in particular, this meticulous process spanned over two days, involving a repeated cycle of 12 hours each day. Initially, after the first 12 hours, I rinsed and gently brushed the blade using only paste detergent and water. Then, I let it air dry. The following day, while the blade was predominantly greyish white, there were still some persistent reddish and brownish stains. Therefore, I repeated the cycle. After another 12 hours of brushing with the mixture of paste detergent and fermented lime juice, followed by a rinse with paste detergent and water, I finally achieved the desired greyish white appearance you see now. Lo and behold, the transformed blade. Notice the remarkable transformation. Take a moment to compare its current radiance with its previous rust covered state before the cleansing process began using rancid coconut juice. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to an essential tool for your Chris Cleaning Toolkit, the Ace brand toothbrush. This Malaysian classic boasts durable nylon bristles and is designed to withstand rigorous use. I stumbled upon it at a local hardware store and it has proven to be an exceptional choice for Chris maintenance. While the packaging might suggest it's suitable for dental hygiene, I must advise against using it on your teeth. Its stiff bristles designed for robust cleaning could potentially harm your gums. However, for crisp cleaning, it's unparalleled. The toothbrush's hardness makes it perfect for scrubbing away impurities from your blade, ensuring a thorough clean without risking damage to the delicate metal. It's an indispensable tool for preserving the beauty and integrity of your Chris. Once the blade has been meticulously brought to a state of mute, the traditional next step is the application of warangan, a method used to create a protective layer on the surface of the Chris blade to guard against rust. However, it's fascinating to note that there exists an alternative to this conventional process. My friends from Jambi, Padang, and West Java have introduced me to a popular method in these regions that offers a different approach to protecting the blade. This revelation seemed particularly insightful. Given my years of experience in collecting crisps, 
I've noticed that antique blades from these areas often lack the warangan finish, but instead boast a unique shiny sheen and a waxy texture feel to it. Initially, I speculated that some form of wax might have been applied to these blades as a final protective coating. Yet, this theory remained speculative. This alternative method, favoured in parts of Indonesia, underscores the rich diversity in the care and preservation practices of, for these cultural artefacts. This version aims to provide a clearer understanding of the alternative method to Warangan, while also highlighting its significance in the broader context of trace maintenance and pre preservation practices. I'm excited to unveil two secret ingredients that offer a brilliant alternative to Warangan, particularly useful in regions where Warangan materials are hard to come by. Rice husks and coconut fibers. Before diving into the process, I want to stress the importance of wearing gloves. This precaution not only prevents the transfer of natural oils from your hands to the blade, uh, ensuring the purity of its surface, but also protects your skin from potential irritation caused by handling dry husks and the fibers. The application technique is rather straightforward, yet effective. You begin by spreading the rice husk evenly over the blade, then using the coconut fibers as a brush, gently rub the blade in a single unidirectional stroke. You might find that using a small container for this process can be somewhat restrictive due to limited maneuvering space. Notice that the transformation as you work, after just a few minutes of rubbing, the blade gradually shifts to a more greyish hue. While some hust may be lodged in the blade's crevices, they pose no immediate concern and can be addressed later. Turning to the other side, the change becomes even more pronounced. The blade not only adopts a grey, greyer tone, but also gains a distinctive waxy texture. Despite the barrier of gloves, the smoothness is palpable. This method, employing rice husk and coconut fibers, not only serves as an innovative substitute for warangan, but also imbues the crazed blade with a unique finish that's both protective and aestetically pleasing. <laughs> Traditionally, this process is carried out on a tumping, which is a generously sized flat tray crafted from woven bamboo. Reflecting on this, I can fully appreciate why my friends emphasize the importance of using such a tray for this task. In hindsight, I realized that I should have taken this advice from the start. With that acknowledgement, please bear with me for a moment as I transition to using the appropriate tumping tray right now. I now have the traditional tumping tray with me, graciously sent from Sumatra for this very purpose. Moving forward, with the process on this tray proves to be a vast improvement over the previous small container I initially used. Allow me to be candid, this is a meticulous and labor-intensive task that demands utmost patience and precision. Yet, the effects are becoming evident, even at this early stage. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, I would like to clarify that my studio lighting has remained unchanged since the beginning of this recording. Under these consistent conditions, the blade is already beginning to exhibit a reflective sheen and shine, showcasing the effectiveness of this method. This procedure will be repeated meticulously until the blade achieves a deeper, darker grayer hue, complemented by a satisfactory reflective sheen. It's crucial to note that once this stage is complete, there's no need to rinse the blade with water or detergent. The next step involves directly applying Chris oils to the blade. And here we have the desired outcome a blade with a darker grey coloration and a shiny reflective sheen under the studio lights. I am pleased with the results, so I will now proceed to prepare the blade for its oil finish. Now, one might wonder uh, if this technique is akin to sanding the blade with sandpaper. However, I believe it to be less invasive. Sandpaper might remove parts of the blade, creating metal shavings. Now, to demonstrate that this method does not wear down the blade's surface, I will wipe it on this paper towel. If the husks were abrasive, we will see a greyish particles here. Now, as you can see, the towel remains clean. No grey particles, no oil, no wax. This suggests that natural tannins or waxes from the husks have transferred onto the blade's surface, sealing any exposed pores and imparting a wax-like sheen. At this stage, while we could conclude the process with the application of oils, I propose an additional preparatory step. Immersing the blade in WD-40. 
this is not merely a supplemental measure. It's a strategic move to ensure that any moisture concealed within the blade's layers is thoroughly expelled before we proceed to the final oil finish. This step is crucial for safeguarding the blade against potential corrosion, ensuring its preservation and enhancing its longevity. Hey, if you have learned something new from today's video, do have a care and remember to subscribe, like and share if you would. Your support will help this video reach out to other craze enthusiasts out there and will allow them to discover and explore deeper into the facets of craze collecting in upcoming videos. Do share your thoughts and questions in the comments below and let's weave the future of craze collecting together. Presenting the blade post WD-40 soak, now fully air dried, the absence of oily residues on the paper towel is a testament to its thorough drying. The blade not only retains a shiny and waxy feel, but also boasts a stunning gun grey hue. At this juncture, I am pleased to declare the blade itself clean. However, the full restoration journey is far from complete. The next phase involves meticulous attention to the fittings. Additionally, I am anticipating the arrival of a 9 karat gold bead destined to replace the currently missing ball here where the mouth is, adding a touch of elegance and authenticity to the entire ensemble. If you missed my previous video on reading the Blade of Rust, you can watch it right here. Until my next video, stay curious, start exploring, and keep the legacy of the craze alive.